All right, so apparently TMZ was told by somebody that Takashi 69 actually pointed the fingers and said those were the people or that was the guy that shot at Chief Keith down in Manhattan. Uh, I'm okay. That's the story I'm gonna say. <laughs> Shout out to TMZ. That's the story that I'm gonna say. But I, but I am also gonna say this. They left it very very vague on where they got the information from. I mean, this is TMZ. They usually tell you everything. Me and the Notification Gang would like to invite everybody to come join us Monday through Thursday, 9.20 to 10 o'clock for Morning Coffee, where we discuss the events of the prior day and also just talk mess about stuff. See you then. Hey, don't forget to check out the link of the day in the description. Oh, Black Dynamite, I wish it was that simple, but this is much bigger than you and me. Hey, little mama. It may be bigger than you, and it may be bigger than me, but it ain't bigger than you and me. Can you dig it? BBN, Jack Frost. What's up, party people? I'd so yeah. So TMZ, that is TMZ. So TMZ is reporting that Takashi Six Nine has actually fingered an alleged shooter. This is what they're saying happened. Okay, so in addition to the other situations that is currently going on with Takashi 69 and the people who were arrested in conjunction with the case that is happening right now, three more known associates have had federal indictments against them. Kentia McKenzie, Anthony Ellison, and Denard Butler. Everybody knows uh, Anthony Ellison, I believe, is already under, well, in uh, custody. That is the individual who was actually accused of kidnapping and assaulting Takashi 69 over the summer. Anthony Ellison, he's already in custody. The two others, Kentia McKenzie and Denard Butler, have also been indicted with connections to crimes related to Takashi. More specifically, it says, we're told McKenzie, aka Kuda B, was indicted right after Takashi spoke with investigators and pinned him as the trigger man at the Chief Keith shooting at last June in Times Square. For all those that don't know, that shooting happened right after Takashi went, I believe, on IG. He was like FaceTiming or IG living. Is there anything they call? Do they just call it the live? Like, is it is that this is that what it's called? Just is this just called live? Anyway, so that shooting happened right after Takashi Six Nine was on live with Kato. I, I want to say his name is Kato. Is his name Kato? Yeah, I think his name is Kato. I don't think his name is Kato. Anyway, Chief Keef's cousin. <laughs> God dang it, I'm terrible with names. So, um, this happened right after Takashi 69 was on a live with Chief Keef's cousin when he said he was going to put a, like, 30 stacks or 30 racks or 30 packs. A 30 pack, there it was. 10 packs or whatever packs they said they was going to put on his head. The shooting happened in uh, Manhattan shortly after that. And they say that McKenzie was allegedly paid 10 grand to shoot Chief Keith. So uh, I, I don't I don't think they meant shoot at, but I think they meant actually shoot. But who knows, right? It also says... According to law enforcement sources, well, you know, that that's what they're saying. McKenzie was allegedly paid 10K to shoot Chief Keith, but he didn't shoot Chief Keith. So was he, did he get paid for it? So he was paid to shoot Adam? You understand what the problem I have right here with that sentence? So maybe he got paid, but he was paid to shoot at Chief Keith. 
Or maybe he was paid to shoot Chief Keith, and he just, you know, it didn't happen. So they said, hey, good try, and they gave him the money. Anyway, according, this is all according to law enforcement sources. Remember, it says, Takashi and Keith have been beefing leading up to the shooting. As we first reported, two men, including a known Takashi associate, tracked down Keith in New York City and opened fire but missed. If everybody else remembers this, okay, this is something because... Those guys were picked up right after the shooting. Remember? Does anybody else remember that? Those guys was picked up right after the shooting, right after the shooting, and then we heard nothing from them. We didn't hear no more about that. We They reminded us about the shooting, but it's like people just absolutely forgot that there were two guys that was picked up for the shooting. So did they pay him beforehand? Anyway, I don't know. But those guys were already picked up. So is are they saying that Takashi spoke out on on those gentlemen then? Because I would assume that because they got picked up so soon. I don't know. I mean, uh, they they obviously law enforcement sources aren't actually working uh, with TMZ, telling TMZ but so much information. And I guess that is something that's that's important to the case. So that's why it hasn't been leaked yet, I guess. And that's that's why it hasn't been reported on yet. Because it's important to the case. That's all I could assume. Because they got picked up right after the shooting, if anybody ever remember. I don't even think a week passed. Seriously, I don't even think an entire week passed before these guys got picked up. It's like they, they did the shooting and then, they, you know, they stood in front of the police precinct to hail a cab or something. Like, these guys really got picked up quick. The article also says, we're told authorities have not apprehended McKenzie. So McKenzie is the one that has not been apprehended. Kente McKenzie has not been apprehended. Uh, Anthony Ellison has been apprehended. I forgot uh, the name that he goes by. And Denard Butler has been apprehended. So I'm assuming that they're trying to say, because it was two people at the shooting. So I'm assuming at this point, this is just my assumption that Anthony Ellison paid why Tin K. McKenzie and Denard Butler carried it out. I mean, I don't know. I'm not trying to put the pieces together. I'm just saying, uh, the, you know, anyway. So we're told authorities have not apprehended McKenzie. Ellison was already in custody for allegedly, allegedly, kidnapping and assaulting Takashi. And Butler was busted by the ATF on Wednesday. So I'm guessing they wanted to make sure that they had more people in custody. Okay, so I was in the courtroom, right? And this is what I mean by, and I'm not trying to throw shots. I just want to point something out. When they have a superseding indictment, that just means that it's open because the case is still, you know, they're still going over the case and they might get new information. So they want to be able to add people to the indictment. That's basically what it's saying. It's not saying necessarily that they're looking for all new different crimes that they're going to find because a YouTube content creator <laughs> made a video and told them about something that they had no idea about. That is not what they're saying. They're not saying, I'm laughing because, I mean, there was like a month or like probably about two months where there was a, quite a few different channels just assuming that, that the feds is looking, and not just channels, but actual, uh, you know, people that watch the channels in the comments, assuming that the feds are, like, watching YouTube content creators' channels and trying to, like, bust big cases. I'm, like, pumping my fist while I'm making that noise, buddy. Bust big cases. And <laughs> that's not what's happening, man. I mean, okay, forget it. I'm going to leave that alone. Anyway, so... Yeah, so basically the reason why, uh, you know, federal cases are usually superseding, not federal cases, but rocketeering cases just in general is because more information might come out that more parties are involved in it. So they want to be able to add more people to the case that they're already going over. If it's some brand new case that had nothing to do, that's going to be a new case. Anyway, neither here nor there. So... They did speak about in court that there was a superseding indictment, but it was because what they were saying was, if I remember correctly, 
that because of the nature of the crimes that, that they are prosecuting for, they do plan to arrest more people because like I told y'all before, when Takashi went on uh, the breakfast club and said what he said, they had to pick Takashi up immediately. One, because there's a good chance that he was going to get super violated, which basically just means beat up and assaulted or embarrassed publicly. There's a good chance that that was going to happen. Um, quite frankly, that's what they did to him last time when the, the chain situation happened. They super violated him. Anyway, so that's neither here nor there. What I'm trying to say is, is that they, when Takashi went on the breakfast club, what he did was he forced the FBI's hand and now they had to pick him up and they had to pick other people up also. And they had to start their, their, the, the, uh, court proceedings or, you know, that level of their investigation or, or, you know, the system quicker than they wanted to. So they were people that they just wasn't in the, how do you say they weren't able to arrest at that time because either evidence weren't wasn't there or they didn't have hands or eyes on them or obviously once they start scooping people up some people are going to make sure that they get low so they wanted they didn't have everybody in a position to pick up before they got low so that's what happens when some shit when something breaks out and then you got to just you know start picking people up in the middle of the night you don't get everybody so it also says we're told authorities have not apprehended McKenzie. Ellison is already in custody for allegedly, allegedly kidnapping and assaulting Takashi and Butler was busted at the ATF on Wednesday. Ellison and Butler are expected to appear in court later this afternoon. If I would have knew that and if it wasn't this much snow, I would have went down there, but it is what it is at this point. The U.S. Attorney's Office for the Southern District of New York declined to comment on Takashi's cooperation. We've reached out to Takashi's lawyer. So far, no word back. So I'm not 100% sure how TMZ knows that Takashi pointed the finger at anybody. Because, they're, okay, the first paragraph reads, three known associates of Takashi 69 just got slapped with federal indictment and law enforcement sources tell TMZ. Takashi dropped the dime on one of them. Okay. For the shooting of Chief Keith, right? Okay, he dropped the dime on one of them. Copy. But then, they also say, the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Southern District has declined comment on Takashi's cooperation. We reached out to Takashi's lawyers so far, no word back. So who the hell told TMZ this? I really want to know. <laughs> who told TMZ this? It wasn't the authorities, and it also wasn't it also wasn't it also wasn't his lawyer who told TMZ that, I'm not saying it's not true you get what I'm saying I'm not saying that somebody didn't tell TMZ this I'm also not saying that Takashi didn't do it what I'm saying is who told TMZ that Takashi did it I guess it gotta be somebody speaking to Takashi that, got, that Takashi trusts Right? Takashi trusts them and he, he, he told them something. And then they decided to tell or sell, I mean, tell the story to TMZ. Because, look, I mean, one more time, I'm going to go, the link is going to be in the description. You can look at it yourself. If I remember. <laughs> one more time. Three known associates of Takashi 69 were slapped with federal indictments. The law enforcement sources tell TMZ. Okay, so the law enforcement has told them that three sources were slapped with federal indictments. Then it goes on to say, Takashi dropped the dime on one of them for the chief um, keep shooting, right? Law enforcement um, sources told TMZ that three of Takashi's associates were slapped with federal indictments. Well, quite honestly, we know about seven others that also were slapped with federal indictments, but that's beyond the point. Slapped with federal indictments, right? And then in the second to last paragraph, it says, the U.S. Attorney's Office of the Southern District has declined comment on Takashi's cooperation. So did the FBI? So you're trying to tell me the FBI 
told TMZ? Or is it one, somebody that knows Takashi? Pardon me. Somebody that knows Takashi. I don't know. Y'all figure it out. You tell me what y'all think in the comment down below. Seriously. I want to know what y'all think. Because they're saying that the district attorney ain't say anything. Which I wouldn't believe the district attorney would. So are they saying the FBI told them? That's a stretch. The FBI. Those guys. Those, the FBI told TM. I don't know, man. I don't know what to tell you. Anyway, leave it down in the comment section. I want to know what y'all guys think about this. Oh, man. Oh, man. Somebody really want him to look like a snitch. I'm not saying he didn't snitch, but I'm saying someone really wants him to look like a snitch. Like, comment, subscribe. Join the notification gang. Hashtag Bronx Bombers. Let's get it. I love y'all. Take care of each other. Hug the kids for me. I haven't forgotten about you. And that's all I got on this one. I'm out. If you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. If you would like to help dictate the direction that this channel takes, please leave a comment. All comments are appreciated, whether positive or negative. Thank you very much and enjoy your day. And remember, positive thoughts cause for positive things to happen. Let's get it.